Hi guys, it's Legionero back with another video. I would like to say welcome to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel and also those who keep coming back each time I post a new video. So today is not technically a um, random Saturday vlog because most of the things that I recorded for this video, I recorded during the week. Um, I did finish the bomber jacket and I showed, I'm showing you guys how I add the lining because the McCall 7100 is an unlined jacket. So um, I'm showing you guys how I add a lining to an unlined jacket. Uh, I did follow Mimi G's bomber jacket um, tutorial. She has a bomber jacket pattern. I'm not sure if it's out of print or not. Um, I'll if it's not out of print and I find it, I'll link it in the description box below. But um, she has a tutorial on her channel. I'll link the tutorial. And she shows you um, how to add a line to a jacket. Her her, her bomber pattern <laughs> has a, is lined. So um, I just made my, and I'll say this in the video. I made the outside of the jacket then I sewed the lining of the jacket, leaving an opening in the side of the lining and then followed her video on putting, attaching the lining to the jacket. It's super easy. Um, again, I'll make sure that I um, link, I, I will link her video for sure, um, but um, the pattern, I'm not sure if it's out of print or not. I haven't really looked in um, the Simplicity book to see if the pattern's still out. Um, Speaking of simplicity, simplicity and quick sew is on sale this weekend, but I don't think they have anything new out and I don't just want to go buy patterns just to buy patterns. I have, I don't know how many drawers in there are patterns that I haven't even used. So <laughs> um, not to say when new patterns come out, I'm not going to buy any because I'm more than likely I am, but um, I don't think I really feel like going anywhere today. Um, what else? So there's some sticker stuff in here um, in this video. Is there sticker stuff in this video? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, I'll show you some of the t-shirts that I made during the week. Um, my niece and nephew's grandfather, their dad's father, passed away and I made some memorial shirts for the family. Um, I also made a birthday shirt for my friend and then my mommy's um, bonus grandbaby. I made him a t-shirt as well. Show you that in the video. Um, stickers. <laughs> I'm still working on this sticker shop. And the, the reason why it's taking me so long moment of transparency. One is fear. Two is um, I keep creating stuff. Every time something pops in my head, I hop on Cricut Design Space and I got to create it. <laughs> so just creating different sticker sheets and stuff. I just keep creating more stuff, creating more stuff. And I keep trying to tell myself, go ahead and put out what you have and then do shop updates as you create more stuff. Like stop. if I don't stop creating stuff, I will never open the shop. <laughs> It's a shame. Now, I do have a Shopify stuff. I uh, Shopify stuff. I do have a Shopify store. I haven't put the stickers up in there yet, but I wanted to um, do an Etsy shop for the stickers just, you know, because Etsy has traffic and different things like that. They already have a customer base. So um, I wanted to um, put it on Etsy as well as my Shopify store. Um but yeah, that's what I'm going to try to force myself to do this weekend is to write those Etsy titles and descriptions because, you know, um, that's the key with Etsy. Your keywords, your descriptions, your pictures, all of those things um, are the things that kind of um, push your items to to the top of the list um, and some other things. Some people buy ads. So, of course, people who bought ads and space and stuff like that. Um, they will probably get first priority, but, um, yeah, using the right keywords and the right description, some nice pictures and stuff will help your Etsy shop. Um, other than that, oh, 
I need to take pictures in the bomber jacket. I really want mom to take pictures in it, but um, I'll have to mail her the jacket. And I'm not real sure how much longer I have um, with Minerva to post this. I know it's been about six weeks since I had the fabric. I, I want to say it's been about six weeks, I think. Um, and I think you, we have eight to get the post out. So I need to go ahead and take pictures in this jacket. Um, it's snug on me. <laughs> so I'm going to have to maneuver however I do it. Um, but take photos for the jacket. Um, I need to write the blog post for Minerva. I think the post has to be like 500 words or something. I, I'll look it up. <laughs> I need six or eight pictures. I think the blog post has to be like 500 words. You can tell I'm very enthused about this, right? <laughs> I always set myself up for obligation sewing. When anytime I get Minerva fabric, I always be like, why did I do this? I'm setting myself up for obligation sewing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, write out the blog post i would have been finished writing out the blog post but i made some more stickers <laughs> i want to show you in this video but it, it probably won't probably won't be this video because i think um I, I think this video will be pretty long so i don't want to make it too too much longer um but i have some sticker stores that i got from michael's i'll show you guys that once i um print out some more stickers and um get them you can see it, see, well, see one of them right there um, is what I'm putting stickers in um, just so I have an inventory of stickers. Um, and then I have another little thing that I'm going to put stickers in. Um, but I'll show you guys that in another video because I don't want to hold you all day. Um, so I think that is it. Um, it may be some sticker stuff in this video. Again, I can't remember. Definitely some t-shirt stuff. Definitely me finishing up the jacket. Um, I can't think of anything else. I can't. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start rambling now and get started with my day. All right, so I have to make two shirts today. One for my mom, um, one of her bonus grandbabies. Um, she wants to make him, she wants me to make him a shirt. And then I have to make a shirt for my friend her birthday is on the 7th and she wants me to make a shirt for him so I'm for her <laughs> and I'm just stumbling all over my words today so her shirt I already have a um, PNG downloaded so I'm gonna work on mommy's bonus grandbaby shirt um, and I just do creative design and I'm gonna add a page because I'm going to put two things on here. So his nickname <laughs> is Mr. President. And then, so she wants that on the front and then his name on the back. Which is Malik. All right. So I just need to find like a bold type font I think Anton is good that was quick and easy huh <laughs> and then his name And with these, when I make them in Canva, I, I I can definitely make these in Cricut Design Space. But sometimes in Cricut Design Space, um, you have to do a little extra with um, the letters and different things like that. And sometimes I just don't want to be bothered with doing all of that. So a lot of times if I make my, um, when I make my PNGs, I just go ahead and make them in Canva. It's much easier for me. Um, to do that um so yeah mr president on the front and then his name on the back so now that i got that done i just need to 
and I can change the size on Cricut Design Space. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just change the name. You know when you spell some, um, spell out some words <laughs> and you look at them, they look like they're misspelled. <laughs> I can't remember what the word was one time that I did, and I thought that word was misspelled. I was Googling it and everything, and I'm, that's how I'm looking at president. I know it's spelled right, <laughs> but oh boy. Um, anywho, so got it downloaded. It download When you have more than one PNG, it downloads into a zip folder. So I'm just going to open that up and I already have, all right, there we go. So I'm just going to minimize it for now and I already have Cricut Design Space open. Bring this over so you can see the full screen. So I'm going to hit upload. I hit new project um, a while ago <laughs> before I started. It's going to hit upload image, browse. Um, oh, one thing I need to do. Let me hit cancel. So this is in the zip folder. So I'm just going to drag it over here. Select and drag over to my pictures. Because I can't um, get it out of a zip folder. All right. So there's one. I wonder if I should do this in all caps, you know, not print and cut. I need a regular one. Right, so that's uploaded. Hmm. And then grab his name. All right, so I have those two things, and then this, I just hit all images. This is what I'm doing for my friend. So I'm going to go ahead and um, print out my vinyl for these, and then I will show you what the shirts look like. So I just realized I didn't show you all the rest of the process. <laughs> so here goes. I'm going to do um, Malik's first. Um, he is, the shirt I'm using for him is a medium. So, so when you upload more than one thing at a time, it will come like this. So if you move it, you know, it moves both things. So you can just click away and just click one of them, or you can click over here and it'll click one. Um, so let's see. Mr. President, I'm going to try to change, see how this looks. Ooh. Um, I'm going to unlock this and put it back at nine. All right. Three is going to look too awkward. Yeah. All right, so, and then his name on the back. Let's see how this looks. Um, I had to answer the phone, so let me see if I can do some, um, um, Seven by three. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Um, and this is just me when I did the click and drag to select it. This is just so I can see what size vinyl I need to cut. So I need to cut um, 
vinyl that's at least 10 by 6 when I get ready to um, cut the vinyl on this. So I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, prep the one for my friend. So I'm just going to hit new project, upload, view all because it's in my recent uploads. All right, and <laughs> a lot of times with PNGs, they'll come super big like this. So I just always start down at 10. Um, just to see how it looks and it's going to be in like a sparkle um, type vinyl um, so usually I do around the 8 size 8 but I did some shirts I don't think I ever showed you the shirts that I did when I had to I told you I had to make those um, 17 to 20 shirts still don't know I mean I made <laughs> But I'll show them to you um, when I get to the table to show you the vinyl I'm using for this. But um, I did 12, I think, on a large shirt. And it actually looked pretty good. So I think I'm going to leave this at the 10. And I'm going to um, print hers this way. All right. And this is what she chose. She was born in 1976, so she chose this. So I'm just going to hit save. 1976. And now I'm getting ready to um, <laughs> um, go to the table. But first, just to show you, my Cricut Maker is not turned on yet. So it's not going to pick up. But I do want to show you this part. Anytime you're working with heat transfer vinyl on a shirt or a bag or whatever the case may be, always mirror. All right. Always hit mirror. Um, and then it'll tell you here like when I did those 12s I had to use my longer mat so it would always tell me you know you need to use your 12 by 24 mat but this is not that big so it lets you know it's on the 12 by 12 mat I hit continue like I said my machine is not on so it's not going to pick up but here <laughs> I said it's not going to I know my machine's not on because I haven't turned it on <laughs> but uh, once I do that all right, Cricut Design Space wasn't trying to let me be great there for a minute. <laughs> so um, it picked up my maker finally. And this is a glitter iron-on that I'm doing. And I'm going to do more pressure because um, glitter vinyl is a little bit thicker than regular vinyl. And I've been using my blade a lot, so I don't know if my blade has dulled. So I'm just going to use more pressure. And um, then I'm going to let the Cricut do its thing. And then I'll do the same thing with Malik's shirt, except for it's everyday iron-on. And I'm not going to add more pressure to it. All right, so Malik's shirt is just going to be in white vinyl. And this is some scraps that I had left over from making these shirts back here. Um, so I'm just going to find a piece that's big enough for Malik's shirt and use that. And then my friend, I sent her these four and asked her which one she wanted. Because initially I was going to do a black shirt, but then she said she wanted a white shirt. And she chose this vinyl. So this is the vinyl that I will be using for her shirt. And I can put these back where they belong. Also, when you're working with heat transfer vinyl, you want to make sure when you put it on the mat, you put it with the shiny side down. All right. So always mirror. And then when you put it on the mat, you put it with shiny side down. Same thing with regular heat transfer vinyl. This is glitter. Um, shiny side down. Sometimes you have to kind of <laughs> maneuver to figure out the shiny part. But um, this side here is kind of matte. So and this side is shiny. So that's how I know the difference. These are the shirts that I made. Um, my niece and nephew's grandfather passed away. Um, on their dad's side so i made them the shirts it says one says papa and the other says dad always on my mind forever in my heart so i made those for the grandkids and the kids all right here are the shirts um mr 
Mr. President on the first, on the, on the first, on the front, and then um, his name on the back. So, turned out as planned. And then here is the um, 1976 classic. Um, I'm loving it. I really want to know how this, um, oh gosh, this color will look on black. I'm not sure if you can kind of tell. It has like a pinkish, it's not really looking pink on camera, but it has like a rose gold type color to it. Um, but yeah, turned out pretty well. I like both shirts. Um, I really do want to see how this looks on black. Um, but I don't have enough um, vinyl left to try it out. But yeah, super cute. Super duper cute. All right, so the jacket is almost done. All I have to do is add the lining. So um, what I did to finish up the jacket, <clears throat> the outside of the jacket, I added the... Um, neck band, the bottom band, and the zipper. When you get ready to sew up the lining, you sew up the lining the exact same way as you sew up the main jacket. Um, only difference is, of course, you don't have pockets, you don't have the bottom band, you don't have the neck band. Um, you save your sleeve bands, that is the last thing you will add to the jacket. So, um, also in your lining, you are going to leave an opening in one of the sides because you have to turn the jacket to the right side. All right, so again, um, this is an unlined version of the bomber jacket, the McCall 7100. I did a tutorial on that and I will link that in the description box below, but let's get to finishing up this jacket. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add the bottom of the lining to the bottom of the um, to the bottom band of the jacket with the right sides facing. Now, with the lining, um, hopefully you can see this. I left an opening here, right? And um, hopefully <laughs> it's a big enough opening. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to Turn the jacket this way and hope that I can get it to stay in place while I pin it. <laughs> Want to also make sure you can see that because this fabric is slippery and it keeps sliding. <laughs> All right, so that's the bottom band here. So I'm going to take the bottom of the lining, and again, I'm doing this with right sides facing. Just going to take the bottom of the lining and I'm going to attach it to the bottom band, right? So I'm just gonna pin across and then I'm gonna sew across.
so I have the lining attached to the main jacket so now what I'm going to do I'm going to take the lining and I'm going to pull it up all right right and this right here make sure you can see what I'm doing this is the end of my zipper you want to pull everything all the way up this is the lining this is the bottom of the main jacket you want to pull the bottom pull it to the bottom of the main jacket is meeting the end of the zipper all right now I'm gonna pin And you want to make sure you pull it tight because you don't want it loose. Right? I'm going to, ouch. Try not to stick yourself with a pin. <laughs> See if I can turn it this way. And I'm just turning it over to the other side. This is the other side of the jacket. All right. So this is the bottom of the main jacket. This is the lining. I'm going to pull up the bottom, pull up the lining and the bottom of the jacket until it's even with the end of the zipper and pin. And I'm going to pin all the way around the jacket. Right? So this is the lining jacket. Again, still right sides facing. Tuck in the sleeves because you don't want the sleeves to be in the way. But you're going to pin all the way up around the collar and all the way back down the other side of the jacket. And I really hope you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> all right. These long sleeves are getting in my way. If you watch any of my videos on when I made these simplicity was it 9337 these jogger sets you know my sleeves are too big <laughs> alright so I'm just going to continue to pin all the way around and just making sure my lining is um, sandwiching the zipper in between also make sure that when you get up here to the collar you're tucking the collar in so I can show you that right now this is your collar fold your collar down and so it's tucked in right and then you pin be careful when you're sewing this I'm going to use my zipper foot um, you know, just so it doesn't get my zipper teeth. Alright, so this is the collar. There is um, some notches here. So, that's good. It's matching up. So far, so good. <laughs> one on this end as well. All right, and then you may have to stretch, you know, around your collar um, as well. But I'm going to finish painting this and then I will sew it. All right, so the jacket is pinned all the way down the side, across the top. Ouch. Second time I poked myself. <laughs> and then back down the side. And that's what I'm going to sew.
Okay, so the lining is completely sewn onto the outside of the jacket. So now I'm just going to use this opening and pull everything to the right side. Hopefully I sewed this good enough to where I don't have to go back and re-sew some stuff. <laughs> especially around the collar. So I'm just pulling everything through or pushing or pulling <laughs> everything through that opening. All right. Take the lining sleeves and just tuck them in to the regular sleeve like that. So here's the lining sleeve. I wasn't sure if you could see that. And I'm just pushing it through the regular sleeve. All right. So it looks like I did pretty good around the collar. All right. Here's the bottom. Pulling the zipper part out. This is nice, guys. <laughs> All right. So super duper nice. Um, I'm just gonna try to zip it up. Um. One thing you can do, you can top stitch around, and I may do that. I'm just making sure it zips up. Ooh. All right. So just need to give it a good press um, around the bottom band. And I also need to add the sleeve bands. super cute all right so I'm gonna grab my sleeve band or at least one of them and show you um, hopefully I didn't strip my zipper that would be tragic <laughs> tragic anyway I'll wrestle with that later all right, so you got your lining sleeve and your regular sleeve. Just take your sleeve band and you sew the sleeve band the same way you've seen me do in plenty of shirts. Just take the sleeve band, slide it on. You should have some notches to match. And once you get the sleeve band on, you just sew it around. And I'll do the other one and I'll be done with this jacket, guys. So I realized that I never showed you the pattern in this video. I'm sure I showed it in another video, but um, here it is. I'm a call 7100 and I always do view B. That's the one on the model. Um, that's the one I'm used to making. So I always make that one. Um, and I made a medium. I did order the PDF off of McCall's website. I think at the time it was like maybe $3. So I went on ahead and ordered the PDF so I can if I make one for myself I need a large um, because the sleeves are tight on me and then I can zip it but <laughs> so I need a larger size um, so another little sneak peek of some of the stickers um, that I will have in the shop these are 
little sewing machines. These are round stickers. So different sewing machines like sitting on top of a floral um, bed. Um, and they'll be in matte and um, white gloss um, paper. And then these, just some like decorative um, sewing theme um, boxes. Um, there are a lot of sewing quotes, some black and white, some in color. And then because I'm a planner, um, I have like different planner type um, things like check boxes that have sewing machines. Instead of having like circles or hearts or diamonds, I have sewing machines as the kind of like checklist type thing. So you write your list next to the um, sewing machine. Um, and you actually don't have to have a planner um, to use those type of stickers. I'm going to do a video at some point um, showing you guys how um, I use those and just like in a plain notebook. Um, and then these little boxes here, they have the little sewing machines in the corner. And then these I'm going to use whenever I decide on my next sewing projects. I'm just going to put the pattern name and number. So if it's McCall 7100, I'll write McCall 7100 in here. So I'm going to have um, a lot of these that I'm going to be using for different patterns and things that I'm going to use. But again, it'll be a ton. It'll probably probably be more quote stickers than anything like little fun sewing quotes. Um, but and it'll have some of these other things sprinkled um, out in the store as well. Um, I want to put printables in the store. There's so many things that I want to do. Printables, <laughs> um, bookmarks, thank you cards, sewing theme, thank you cards. Um, but right now, I just want to start out with stickers. And I just really need to get, a, get it out there. Just get it out there. So send me some encouraging words in the comments to um, help me light a fire under me. And to go ahead and put out what I have. And then whenever I create something new, I do shop updates. And then let you know about the shop updates that um, I have. So, I think that's it. I think we're going to um, go ahead and end the video here. Um, question of the day. I had one in mind, but I forgot it. <laughs> so, oh. What card game are you awesome at? Um, I haven't played cards in a very long time. So I feel like I'm fairly good at Uno. And I feel like I'm fairly good at Gin Rummy. Now, me and mom used to play Gin Rummy all the time. And she always beat me. <laughs> but um, I do feel like I'm pretty good at Gin Rummy. Um, I avoid spades at all costs. Because spades will get you kicked out of the family. I don't know. I don't understand why this card game is so serious. But if I'm ever at a party, barbecue, whatever, and they break out cards talking about they playing spades, I'm going the other way. I cannot be your partner. I will redig and it'll get me kicked out. I disinherited everything. So, <laughs> so what about you? I used to play um, Phase 10. I think that's the name of that game. I don't remember how to play now, but that was one card game that I got into uh, when I was younger. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think Jen Rummy. Um, me and my friends used to play um, I Declare War. <laughs> Did you ever play that? <laughs> um, another good thing to would, for you to be able to go to Another good thing for you to um, put in the um, comments is what are some card games that you used to play? when you were younger or still play now with your kids or grandkids or um, with your friends. Never played poker, don't know how to play. Um, I don't know if I've ever played Go Fish. I don't think I've ever played that. But um, So let me know what card game you're great at and let me know what card games you played as a child. All right, so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post a new video and I'll see you in the next one.